Assalamu alaikum students. Today I'm here to revise with you uh, mock exams. Uh, um, one of the paper uh, which um, actually uh, we have given you options, different options that uh, to prepare for the mock exams uh, go through with the paper two of May, June 1, uh, May, June uh, 2021, 2022 and 2023. So one of the uh, paper I have opened in front of you, I will try to finish this paper and uh, this will help you uh, to see that how to solve this exam within the given time frame. So as you know, this is uh, paper two uh, extended and 058022, May, June 2021, uh, one hour, 30 minutes you have. Um, before you start solving this question, your calculator must be in front of you. Um, and um, the value of pi, either you used uh, exact value of pi or 3.142. Always you have to write your answers uh, uh, in the answering space. Uh, if, it is an, if it is a measurement, three significant figure. And if it is an angle, you have to write it to the one decimal place. Huh, within calculation, you have to write more than three significant figures. Uh, like uh, if you are not going to write your answer in the answering space, within calculation, you find some uh, approximated value that has to be written to four significant figures so that it do it don't change the um, um, accuracy of the answer when you reach to the final stage uh, of writing the answer into the answering space. So three significant figure in the answering space and one decimal place in the uh, for the angles. Uh, any other thing? No, khalas. So we are ready to start, start solving the question. The first question came on probability. So in paper, uh, examiner can ask you question on probability, maybe in paper two or paper four. Uh, if examiner asks you question on probability in paper two, there is a very less chance that the examiner will ask you probability uh, uh, alone question uh, in the final exam. But um, I cannot say that uh, if probability he has asked in paper two, he will not ask you in paper four. Maybe he will ask probability within a statistics question or with the sets or with any other topic. Anyways, let's start the question. Uh, the, the probability that Jane wins the game. So can you see that wins the game? If the probability of winning the game is 7 over 10, then what is the complement of that? The complement of that is losing the game or not winning. So Jane, Jane, the probability of win is 7 over 10. I can write with my knowledge on probability that if the probability of win is 7 over 10, I can write the probability of not winning. How can I find the not winning? Just from 10, I subtract 7. Yani 10 minus 7 over 10. So 3 over 10 is the probability of not winning. And the beautiful thing is the probability of winning plus probability of not winning, that is always equal to one. Why? Because seven over 10 plus three over 10, it has to be 10 over 10, which is equals to one. So the total probability is always equal to one. If he asks you, what is the probability of, uh, uh, for example, probability of yes is three over five, what is the probability of no? Obviously, you will say, Mr. Omar, 5 minus 3, which is 2 over 5, because 3 over 5 plus 2 over 5, when we add them, the answer is equal to 1. Anyways, let's finish this question quickly. How to write this answer in the answering space? You can see examiner has put only one mark. So 7 over 10 is the probability of winning. So the probability of, I'm 100% of, I'm sure the examiner will ask you, not win. So Jane does not win the game. The probability should be 3 over 10. Now, sometime examiner, um, um, you know, relates this with statistics, yani, uh, the probability with statistics. Why I'm saying statistics? Because I have a data, I have a probability of only one game. So one game is 3 over 10. Now, if she plays 50 times, you just need to multiply 50 with the given probability. Is he asking uh, not winning or winning? No, he's asking winning probability. Yani win how many times she is capable of winning. So you need to multiply 50 with the 7 over 10. Uh, you may use calculator and write here 50, 50 times 7 over 10. 
and that gives you 35. So I can say uh, there are uh, 35 games in which the, the Jane will able to win the game and there are 15 games in which she will lose. OK, so guys, this was pretty simple question. But again, I'm saying if a question in paper two uh, is asked uh, uh, related to probability, it doesn't mean that he's going to ask. Uh, he's not going to ask probability. You can check paper four related to this exam. Maybe he has asked um, a probability question, but uh, uh, the, the, the yani there is there are more chances that he's going to connect probability with some other concept, maybe statistics or uh sets or algebra whatever now uh question number two is guys based on numbers why numbers because here the examiner used the command word calculate so calculate is related to calculator so he wants to check the skills of uh, calculators you need to copy this in into the screen how uh, we can calculate uh, this is called fourth root of 0 0.0256. There are two ways to write this expression. Either you write this four in the pocket here and 0 0.0256. This is called fourth root of 0 0.0256, or you can write it as 0 0.0256 raised to the power, not four, one over four. Got it? And if it is a square root of 0 0.0256, then you write 0 0.0256 raised to the power 1 over 2 because we don't write 2 here. Otherwise, if this is 3, then I will write here 3. So, so everyone understood how we can write the fourth root uh, in the power form. Now I'm going to open my calculator. Oh, calculator is on the screen. How to write the root? You can go to the uh, calculator, sh press shift and press the square root sign. Guys, it's a cube root. No, I don't want cube root. Shift a power. Now you can write here four. This is the fourth root of what? 0 0.0256. And I'm go I got my answer as 0 0.4. Now students will ask, Mr. Omar, shall I write my answer in fraction or in decimals? Since you got a terminating decimal, any uh, it is not full of digits. No need to approximate it. Just copy 0 0.4. Or if you like to write as a fraction, both answers you can check in the marking scheme. Examiner will accept it. And you can again see it has one mark. So there is no need to show any working to the examiner. Now let's go to the question number three, guys. It is uh, related to statistics. And the subtopic of statistics is stem and leaf diagram. Stem and leaf diagram. So stem and leaf diagram, guys, uh, uh, in the class, those students who attended the session, they remember that uh, we um, we took this concept in which uh, key is very important. Key says that, um, you know, here, suppose Mr. Omar has written two. So two is going to be considered as a stem. Let me show you again. This two is my stem. This is a stem. And what are my leaves? My leave is considered to be zero and collectively it is representing what 20 minutes. So may I say this one and this two, this one and two is representing 12 minutes. This zero and this eight is meaning Yani or I can write it as eight minutes. I hope it is clear to everyone. Now total values are how much total values are already given by the examiner 12, 15 values. Can I count? Uh, how many leaves I have in the first row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven leaves. I'm writing the frequency here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven leaves and I have one uh, leaf attached with the stem two. So there is one. So you can also count it. How much are they? Seven plus seven, 14, 14 plus one and 15. So I have total 15 leaves. When examiner gives you a stem and leaf diagram in IGCSE, he, he normally asks you, what is the mod? What is the range? What is the interquartile? What is the uh, median? Uh, so these type of question can be asked by the examiner. So mod means which data value is appearing most frequently. So guys, you can check that. I have here uh, seven is appearing two times, uh, eight is appearing two times, uh, two is appearing two times, uh, yani 12 basically I'm saying that. And uh, uh, most importantly, you, you guys can see that uh, 
16 is appearing um, uh, three times. So it is appearing most frequently. So if in the exam you just write six, that will be wrong. According to your key, you have to write your stem with the six as well. So your value is 16, not the six. So 16 is my mod because 16 is appearing in the data three times. However, the other values may be repeated one time or two times. So my mod is 16. Now next is median. Guys, in order to find the median, although I, I have told you one formula in the exam, that formula is, I will write it for you guys. Uh, it's This formula is n plus one divided by two. n is representing total number of values. So total number of values are 15. So 15 plus one over two, it is giving you 16. 16 over two, it is equal to eight. So basically eighth value is your median. Eight is not the median, eighth value is the median. So can I count it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Mr. Omar, 11 is my median. Now, if a student says, Mr. Omar, in the exam, I cannot keep the formula in my mind. Can you give any other method? Yes, I can give you another method. The best method is uh, tally method. So in the, you cross first, you cross last, second, second last, fourth, fourth last, fifth, fifth last, sixth, sixth last, seventh, seventh last, eight, eighth last and in the end you will be left with only one value because my values are odd whenever you have odd number of values guys your median is only single and yani only one median is left if the values are even then i will be left with two even uh, two values in between and then we take the average of those values to write a single median however in this case i have only one uh, uh, median which is not one which is basically 11 along with the according to my key. So my median is 11. Done. Now let's move on to our next stage. Uh, we finished with our uh, median and mod. Now the examiner is asking you range. Guys, range is equals to maximum value minus minimum value. What is my maximum? This is my maximum. Yeah, I need 20. 20 is my maximum. And 0, 3, yani 3 is my minimum value. So 20 minus 3 is giving you what? 17. So 17 is my range. By the way, in mathematics, uh, there is one more thing which is called difference. Sometimes in directed numbers or integers, uh, examiner asks, what is the difference? Difference is also called maximum minus minimum. So in other words, difference and range both have the same formula. Got it? So guys, as you see, Mr. Omar has found the range, which is maximum minus minimum. So 20 minus, 30, 20 minus 3, which is 17. Again, guys, the three marks, the examiner has put one mark for it, one mark for it, and one mark for it. So three marks you can get without writing, uh, showing any working. That's why Mr. Omar uh, raised the formula. So tally method is very good method to find the median. Suppose if a student says, Mr. Omar, if the examiner is asking a lower quartile, so lower quartile is also not very hard. You know, how can you do that? When you apply the tally technique, uh, the tally technique gave you uh, the, the median. Okay, you saw that. The tally technique gave you the median. Now, once you find your median, your median divides the data into two equal halves. Your data is divided into two equal halves. If you apply the same procedure into the first half, which is the green area, and you try to find the median, that will give you the lower quartile. Can I use the tally method again? Cross first and uh, the last second and the second last third and the third last. Guys, seven is left. So this zero seven is your lower quartile, which is 25% of the data. And if a student wants to find the upper quartile in the exam, then he has to look into the pink area, which is the second half. You cut the first, you cut the last. Second, second last. Third, third last. So what is left in between? 16 is left, and that is your 75% of the data. Uh, normally, this type of a question is, is asked by the examiner in A-levels, but I have explained it to you since it is also in your course. Got it? So let's move on, guys, to our next question. So statistics was uh, asked in question number three. Now we got to go to the question number four. 
In mathematics, uh, we need to understand this terminology, consecutive integers. First, you need to know what is the meaning of integers. Integers are all whole numbers with plus and minus sign. Yani zero is an integer, one is integer, minus one is integer, two is integer, minus two is integer, three is integer, minus three is integer. So all the whole numbers with plus minus signs are integers. Now, what is the meaning of consecutive? Consecutive means the numbers which are together. Any one, two, three are the consecutive integers because they are side by side. They are together, but one, five, seven, they are not any consecutive. They are not consecutive if I'm talking about integers. Huh? If I'm saying even integers, then two, four, six, these are consecutive even integers. If I say one, three, five, yes, they are the consecutive odd integers. But if I'm talking about integers, then these are the one, two, three, uh, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. These are all consecutive integers. Now, examiner says, how can you find the range? So this question looks like a little bit algebra related or statistics. So student needs to know the terminology of range and what Mr. Omar told you range is equals to maximum minus minimum. Uh, maximum minus minimum, Mr. Omar, how can I find the K consecutive integers? It's not hard, man. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, ta da 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 da. Uh, next, yani, till K, till K. These are all my integers. How many integers? K integers. For example, someone says, can you write the first 10 integers? Then I say one, two, three, four, da 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 da, 10. What is the range of these numbers? Maximum minus minimum. Yani you do 10 minus one, which is giving you nine. But in the case which is mentioned by the examiner in the question, uh, what is your maximum value? Your maximum value is K. What is your minimum value? That is one. Can you subtract it? Yes, Mr. Omar. K minus one is the range because K is my maximum number and one is your minimum number. So the, your range is K minus one. I hope it is clear to you everyone now the next question number five i don't know this examiner likes statistics a lot because the fifth question is also on statistics and the subtopic is um, uh, called uh, um, uh, this is called uh, let me tell you guys this is a scatter diagram this is a scatter diagram a uh, scatter diagram guys it's very simple let me explain you he will write some uh, quantity here um, uh, he will uh, label the uh, other quantity uh, vertical axis. Suppose X represents uh, um, a number of uh, um, what I can say that, um, or uh, I think I can say that uh, Y is temperature, Y is temperature, and uh, the number of selling of cold yani beverages. You understand, uh, for example, like Pepsi, Cola, all these things uh, with the with the increase of temperature, how this graphs look like. You will say that, Mr. Omar, uh, if the temp temperature increases, uh, the, the the more cola, more cola will be sold out. So can I say this is directly proportional or this is inversely proportional? So it is like uh, any if the temperature increases, if the temperature increases, the the more cola will be sold out more cola will be sold out you got my point more cold beverages will be used by the people so this is a positive correlation this is a positive correlation but for example if i say uh, uh, temperature versus your math marks does it mean that your your marks are related with the temperature the answer is no there is no temperature related to your marks so it means that mr omar there is no no correlation between my marks and the temperature. Ha, there are situations when um, you know uh, you have a negative correlation. When one thing is increasing, the other thing is decreasing, and then you will say this is a negative correlation. So uh, how we show the correlation, guys? We show the correlation by uh, yani he gives you some points. If the 
if a line of best fit which you normally draw in chemistry and physics practicals so uh, the line which best fits all the points this is a positive correlation because it is sloping upward if you have the points like this the, the it is the line of best fit is uh, is uh, sloping downward so this is a negative correlation guys and if the points in on the scatter diagrams are spread the all everywhere then you say that i cannot draw a line which is showing a trend so this there is zero correlation or no correlation between them anyways let's come to the question um so this question is examiner has given you um, a data set three data set values are given uh, the values are are, are not so many so let's let's see what the examiner is asking you uh, put a ring uh, around one correct statement it shows no correlation okay it is not possible to tell if there is a correlation as there are not enough points it shows uh, a negative correlation and um, it it shows a positive correlation obviously it is not a positive correlation for positive correlation it should be like that now students will definitely get confused that uh, uh, mr omar if i draw the, the line of best fit it looks like a negative correlation and uh, i cannot say this is there is no correlation because either it is negative correlation or it is uh, uh, the information is too not too much in my understanding uh, the we should um, just circle this one because the points are not so many it doesn't show the trend however if the examin if the, if the student thinks like it is a negative correlation he has to understand he, he must have like uh, more than 3 points to 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 see the trend of the uh points okay uh, uh b each of the four scatter uh, diagram uh, shows the uh, same set of data a line has been drawn on each diagram so oh guys look at that now examiner is giving you a clue didn't he use so many points he used so many points guys so it means if the examiner has used so many points so points that so many points are important to to see the trend so um, he said that a diagram a and a diagram b diagram c and diagram d uh, the line uh, in the diagram is the most appropriate line of best fit very good obviously you will say mr omar this is not a uh, best line of best fit, any uh, line of best fit because it should pass right Uh, in between of the points which which can show the trend of the graph mr omar this is also not good why because it is it is leaving all the scatter points any yani the the points above the line no this is not a good uh, line of best fit also mr omar you see that uh, more points are here less points are down no this is not so i think this is the best line of fit, best fit you should go for so the option is c so the diagram c is your answer because your line of best fit is rightly passing uh, through the half of yani approximately um, she is balancing every point uh, whether it is above or below or on the line so this is c now we go to the question number 6 guys a rhombus oh rhombus is what rhombus is basically um, uh, a quadrilateral in which all sides are equal ha huh? it is not a square in square also we know all sides are equal and their inside angles are also 90 degrees uh Excuse but in rhombus uh, assalam alaikum who is there is there anyone rida uh, ya mr oh wow mashallah mashallah you are here guys yes is there any question mr can i please ask you what paper you are uh, working on so i can open it with you Uh, yeah yeah but you can ask me because let me record the video first and then after that i'll take your questions got it rida is it fine can i record the video first and then i will yeah yeah record this i just want to ask which paper is this like what year uh, this is this is uh, may june 2021 paper 4 uh, uh, i mean 21 yeah 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 just check it out uh, yes it's 22 uh may june this is one of the mock exam expected exam paper okay it's fine 
So yes, as you guys see that uh, he's talking about a rhombus. So don't try to include rhombus among square. No, in square, all the inside angles are 90 degrees and all sides are equal. Huh? In rhombus, few things are common with rectangle. What are the things? Uh, square has four lines of symmetries and four order of rotation. But um, um, rhombus has only two lines of symmetries and it has only two order of rotation. Ha! Huh. The thing which is common, their um, diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Their diagonals are, yani I'm talking about the, uh, the diagonals of uh, a rectangle and uh, rhombus both are um, uh, intersecting each other at 90 degree. But now what the examiner is asking you, looks like examiner is giving this question on geometry. So geometry, guys, you took it in grade nine and the subtopic is construction. In construction, you need to use your compass. You need to use your compass. You need to use your ruler and you can also use your protractor. OK, these are the things you must have in your geometry box. However, in this case, Mr. Umar will use compass. So inshallah, uh, at this time, yani the, the feature is not allowing me to use compass function. So maybe I will record it on a separate platform and send it to you. But I'll try to explain you how I'm going to use my compass. A rhombus has a side of length 6.5 centimeter. Um, the, one of the diagonal, um, you know, is um, is is given by the examiner. So diagonal means. Uh, let me show you how the rhombus looks like. The rhombus, when you will construct it, it will look like this. So what do you need to do, guys? You need to place the needle of the compass here, the needle of the compass here, and the pencil here. And how much uh, longer the distance? If you place the uh, the ruler here. That ruler, yani your compass should be opened how much longer? Because he said the side is 6.5 centimeters. So what do you need to do? Place the needle here and uh, and draw the arc like this. Yani you get my point? You don't know where you where is the point. So you just need to place, place the needle here and the other uh, end where is the pencil. So you just produce one arc. And repeat the same procedure, Yarida. Uh, there is the needle here, okay, without changing. So you produce the arc here. Now, this distance will be 6.5, and this distance is also 6.5. And now repeat the same procedure. Produ uh, place the needle of the compass here, press hard here, and draw an arc on the other side with the by using the pencil, which is in, on, on the second end of your uh, compass. And repeat the same procedure by placing the needle of the compass here. Now this is 6.5 and this is 6.5. Wallahi, this is easy peasy question. Uh, don't try to consider that the diagonal diagonal is 6.5. No, diagonal is not 6.5. The side is 6.5. So you need to measure your compass. Look at, look, let me show you how your compass looks like. Okay, guys. So this is your needle. And this is your pencil. So you need to open this. How much? 6.5 centimeters. Some students, they have very good compasses. They can, um, uh, you know, uh, the ruler is included in the compass. Try, uh, I think I, I have seen some Rocco compasses in which ruler facility is there. But no problem. If you have a separate ruler, you can open the arms of the compass, uh, correct to the 6.5. Uh, centimeters and then you can easily draw it. If you don't understand the construction part, I will do it separately and make a video and send it to you guys. Now, next question is question number seven. Question number seven is on numbers, guys. Uh, why I'm saying numbers? Because the examiner is asking you reciprocal. You remember that in the class I have told you many times what is the meaning of reciprocals. Uh, Mr. Abdus Salam taught you when we take the, uh, uh, yani if this is the gradient, and you want to find the perpendicular gradient, you need to do two things. You need to change the sign and you need to reciprocate it. Reciprocation means numerator becomes denominator and denominator becomes uh, numerator, okay? Uh, so this is minus three over two. However, reciprocal means what? Just flip the fraction. If it is three, 
the reciprocal is 1 over 3. If it is one, uh, minus 1 over 3, then it will be 3 over minus 1, or you can also write it as minus 3. But if the examiner writes the fraction 2 over 3, the reciprocal of 2 over 3 is 3 over 2. I'm not taking the perpendicular gradient. I'm just flipping. Yani I'm taking just reciprocal. So reciprocal means flip it. If it is 1 over 3, then it is uh, 3 over 1. If it is uh, 7 over uh, minus 7 over 3, then it is mm, se uh, 3 over minus 7, or you can also write this minus on the top. It's up to you. Same answer will come to you, minus 3 over 7. Anyways, I explained you the concept of reciprocal. So Mr. Omar, the reciprocal of 0 0.2 is 1 over 0 0.2, but this will be considered wrong in the exam, the reason is 0 0.2 has to be a whole number. So what I will do, I will open my calculator and write reciprocal of 0 0.2, yani 1 over 0 0.2, it gives me 5. So the reciprocal of 0, 1 over 0, yani 1 over 0 0.2 is just 5. Um, if a student wants to convert 0 0.2, first of all, in the form of a, uh, of a fraction, let me write 0 0.2 again. Maybe I did a mistake. 0 0.2 in a fraction, it means 1 over 5. It is 1 over 5. So when you take the reciprocal, so 1 over 5 becomes 5 over 1. So my answer is what? My answer is just 5. If a student wants to write 5 over 1, that is also accept acceptable by the examiner. But 5 over 1 means 5. So that's the answer. Now, prime numbers, guys. As I have already told you, there are 25 prime numbers from 1 to 100. The first prime number, which is the only even prime number, that is 2. The rest of all the all, uh, prime numbers are odd numbers, and odd numbers are more than prime numbers. Yani, uh, 3 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number, 7 is a prime number, but 9 is not a prime number. It is an odd number. Why? Because it has more than two factors. Yani 1, 3, and 9 are the factors. A prime number has only two factors, itself and 1. So 9 is not a prime uh, number. So uh, next prime number is 11, then 13, then 17, then uh, after that 19, then 23, then 29, then 31, then 37, then 41, then 43, uh, then 47, then not 51. 51 can be divided by 3. 57 can be divided by 3. 59, then 61 then 65, uh, 67, then 71, then 73, then not 77, 79, then 83, not 87 because 8 plus 7 is, uh, 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 can be, can be, uh, is 15, it can be divided by 3, 89, and the last prime number is 97. And if you count them, they are 25 prime numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And there is one more prime number, which maybe I have missed somewhere. You can check it out. Uh, did I miss anyone? Mm, 83, 89, maybe 79, 77, 73, uh, 61, 63, 67, 69. Uh, I missed out somewhere. 53, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. 53 was the prime number I missed out. Anyways, guys, you must know the prime numbers. And from 90 to 100, a la tool, I will say not 90, not 91. 91 can be divided by what? 91 divided by 7. So not 92, not 93 can be divided by 3, not 94, not 95. 94 can be divided by 2, 95 can be divided by 5, 96, it can be divided by 2. 97 cannot be divided by any number. So 97 is the only prime number you have. Next question, uh, we need to write an irrational number. So guys, irrational numbers in decimals, they are non-recurring and non-terminating. And it a number which cannot be written in the form of a fraction. So normally any number contains pi is irrational. Any number contains square root, but non-square number, not square root of four, because square root of four is two, which is a whole number. It is a rational number. So, Mr. Omar, uh, first of all, uh, 7 over 5 is a fraction. 7 over 5 is a fraction. A fraction is a rational number. 
zero point six, Mr. Omar. It is a terminating decimal. Uh, it can be written as a fraction, so it is a rational number. Square root of seven. I'll talk about it later. Eight. It is a whole number, and whole number. All whole numbers are rational because they can be written as a fraction. So eight over one is a rational. Square root of nine, Mr. Omar. It is equals to three because three over one. It can be written as a fraction. So this is a rational number. So only irrational number is square root of seven. And I can show you on the calculator. If I try to write square root of seven on a calculator, it will take the full digits, and none of the digit will be seen. Repeated and it will not stop anywhere. It will carry on, you know, forever. So square root Mr. of seven. Uh, recurring decimals is, uh, is rational. Uh, recurring decimals are uh, are rational. Any yani zero okay. point two dot. It's it is rational. Zero point two three dot two dot. It is rational. So all terminate all recurring decimals or terminating decimals are rational. So anyways, guys, let's move on to the next question. Now the next question is on algebra, guys. So this is algebra question algebra yani substitution substitution why i'm writing these uh, things um, along with the questions you can identify uh, to mr omar where you are weak okay are you weak in algebra numbers geometry what are, whatever the thing because these things you took it in grade 9 now i want to find b the examiner has given you the value of a and the value of c substitutions should be always done with the calculator so please take out the calculator and copy uh, the whole expression what you see over here the best thing is guys uh, he has written a fraction so you write a fraction you have a square so please guys uh, uh, don't write square without the bracket so bracket open close i put a square in the place of b i'm going to write uh, do we have the value of p oh bad luck the value of p is not given by the examiner so he's playing a game with us what is the game he is playing uh, the game is this that he did not make B as a subject, so uh, it must carry more than one mark. Look at that. The examiner has put two marks. Don't worry, guys. What is the value of A given to you? The value of A is 5.625. What is the value of B? No, Mr. Omar, it is not given. What is the value of C given to you? Five bracket open, multiply with C, which is two. Okay, let's do it. Um, uh, five times two is how much, guys? It is 10. So 5.625 is equal to B square over 10. Can I do the cross multiply of 5.625 with the 10? So 5.625 times 10 is equal to B squared. When you multiply them, so that your answer will become 56.25 is equal to B squared. And you remember, I want to find the value of B. So take a square root of 56.25 that will give you the value of b so i'm going to find the value of b uh, square root of 56.25 and that gives you 15 over 2 or 17 over uh, 7.5 so in the exam either write 7.5 or you write uh, just um, uh, 15 over 2 both will be acceptable by the examiner now uh, uh, maybe some students say mr omar i'm not good at substitutions or maybe I, I i don't know the algebraic calculations so since it is an equation guys you can also verify your answer in the exam by using the equation solver uh, you know uh, feature of the calculator so what i'm going to do guys uh, rida i'm going to substitute a a is 5.6 Two, five. Then I write the equal sign. How to write the equal sign? You need to press alpha and then calc. A calculator all automatically write the alpha uh, equal sign here. Now, after that, examiner has written a fraction. Uh, B. B is unknown. So you cannot write in the calculator uh, B. You can write only one variable that is X. So I am assuming that my B is X. So press alpha bracket close X squared. So I'm asking my calculator, can you solve this equation for X? In fact, it is B for me, but the calculator will give me the value of X. So bring the cursor down in the denominator and you have five bracket open. What is the value of C given by the examiner two? So put a two here. Now I'm ready to solve this equation. In order to use the equation solver um, feature of a calculator, you need to press shift and solve. Once you press this one, a black line will be seen at the bottom of the screen. This is not your answer. This is initial guess. Uh, taken by the calculator. You have to press equal sign because the calculator is capable of giving you answer closer to 4.4. So equal when I press it, 
calculator gave me 7.5 and be careful in the final exam when left minus right it mean there is a zero error left or right you have so you got the exact answer which is which is basically 7.5 and it is matching with my answer which i got it directly from the calculator so guys in the final exam when you get your answer you can also verify it from the calculator i hope it is clear now the next question is on numbers guys the next question is on numbers and the subtopic is algebra of fractions so he also mentioned without using a calculator now okay i but i will use calculator i will use calculator i'll tell you why i'm going to use calculator because i don't want i will lose my accuracy marks so first learn from mr omar how to write a mixed fraction in a calculator many students they think mixed fraction is like this one whole and yani they write one but then they write uh, uh, fraction hold on uh, 52 maybe later on you write a fraction or maybe i write here 8 over 5 sorry 8 over 5 and then i write one at the back yes yes this is not a mixed fraction wrong it tells you one is multiplying with 8 over 5 can you check that yani one is multiplying with 8 over 5 it should have been 13 over 5 you uh, you got my point yani it's it's not mixed fraction how to write a mixed fraction in a calculator you have to press shift and the fraction symbol then calculator will write a mixed fraction for you for you so this is the common mistake which normally students do in the exam so i'm going to copy this expression 2 over 3 first of all 2 over 3 then i write a division sign guys and after that a mixed fraction so don't write the mixed fraction yani the thing which i have mentioned earlier you have to press shift fraction now a mixed fraction will be popping on the screen one whole 3 over 7 now i am ready to press the equal sign calculator give me the answer 7 over 15 mr omar my answer will be 7 over 15 but if you write the 7 over 15 in the exam um, uh, directly uh, maybe examiner will give you zero marks for that because you did not show any method before it method is very important because don't you know that the calculator has told you without using the calculator you have to give your answer so keep your answer here 7 over 15 but now start working uh, showing some working so keep 2 over 3 as it is keep division sign as it is first convert your mixed fraction to the improper fraction everyone remembers how to convert the mixed fraction to the improper 7 times 3 it is equal to 7 and 7 plus 3 is 10 so mr omar the mixed fraction uh, converted into improper fraction which is 10 over 7 if a student doesn't know how to convert mixed fraction into the improper i will show you now write a mixed fraction one whole 3 over 7 and then press the equal sign automatically your answer will be converted into improper and if you can want to convert any improper into a mixed fraction press shift and sd you press it your calculator will convert the answer into um, a mixed form so both forms can be done now after that guys you have to change your division sign and reciprocate it and you need to reciprocate Take the reciprocal of 10 over 7. So the reciprocal of 10 over 7, 7 goes up and 10 goes down. So 7 over 10. Now you have a multiplication sign in between. Don't try to make the denominator same. Man, whenever you have a multiplication sign, 2 multiplies with 7 and 3 multiplies with 10. So 2 times 7 gives you 14. and 3 times 10 gives you 30 but this is not my answer you will get only one mark uh, um, uh, from the examiner you have to give the answer in the simplest form did you see that the examiner wants the answer in a simplest form so how can i convert my answer in the simplest form boys so 10 over 30 i divided by um or i can use my calculator what is 14 over 30 equals to so 14 over 30 
calculator automatically simplifies to me. He it will give me the answer seven over 15. Now examiner will not cut your marks. Huh? If, for example, Rida says, Mr. Oman, no, I want to tell the examiner how I did this manually. So right here, 14 divided by two gives you seven. So right divided by two. So on both sides, up and down, I divided by two and I got my answer seven over 15. Now, next question is question number 10, and this is basically, guys, a uh, question on from numbers again. In numbers, the subtopic is called standard form. So let me explain you what are the standard forms. So guys, when I write here 2, 3, 4.24, if someone says, is this number in a standard form? The answer is no. This number is not in a standard form. In order to convert a number in a standard form, your decimal should travel and go in front of a digit which should be between 1 to 9 which should be between one to nine. So you must have a digit uh, before the decimal from one to nine, then you uh, then you can say that my number is, is given in a standard form. In mathematics, if you want to push the decimal from right to the left, so basically a number is big and you want to make it small. So you will write 2.3424 into 10 raised to the power. Don't write minus. You have to write a positive power because you are pushing the decimal from right to the left. So how many digits you crossed? You crossed two digits. And if you want to convert this number back into the uh, ordinary ordinary form, because now this number now this number is in a standard form. So now this number is in a standard form. I want to convert the standard form into the ordinary form. So two means push your decimal to the uh, two units, right? So my answer will become 234.24. Let me give you one more question. If an examiner has given a question 0 0.000374 and he said that, can you convert this ordinary number, this uh, ordinary number, can you convert it into standard form? So Mr. Omar suggested that always, always, always that first non-zero digit is my, uh, it has to be before the decimal. So the first non-zero digit is three. So Mr. Omar, my decimal should travel from here in front of three. So how many digits I'm going to cross guys? One, two, three, and four. So you are going to cross four digits. So what I'm going to write guys, Come on, speak it up. This is 3.74, 3.74 into 10 raised to power. Now I'm moving from forcefully sending my decimal from left to the right. How many digits I crossed? Four digits. So I'm going to write minus four. Supposedly, if I, this is the standard form and I want to convert my number into the ordinary form, minus four tells me push your decimal four units left. So when I push my digits, four units left, one, two, three, four. So this is my ordinary form. So I know now how to convert from standard to ordinary and from ordinary to standard form. Now the question which is given by the examiner 0 0.0654. Let me copy it again 0 0.00654. Since my decimal is not in front of six, I need to push the decimal to come and stand in front of six, how many digits I need to cross? I need to cross three digits. So my answer will be 6.54 since I'm moving from left to the right. So 10 raised per minus three is my answer. If I want to convert the standard into the normal form or ordinary form, so the answer will be 0 0.00654, which is the same as the given question. Ha! Huh. Calculator can also help you to convert any number into the standard form. Uh, that thing I will teach you some at some other stage. Let us finish uh, this thing because in calculator we have many features. Uh, one of the feature is uh, a scientific feature. So we need to convert the calculator in a scientific mode and then uh, give a command to the calculator. I want my scientific number uh, should be always three significant figures. Then you will get your answer in a uh, 10 raised to the power form. But that thing I will teach you later on. The number it is given as uh, he said it is uh, uh, is written as an ordinary number. Write down the number of zeros that follow the digit 
zeros. Can you count it, guys? And that this number, I know this number is also um, in a standard form because 1.467, uh, this is like, I already know um, it is given in, in, in a standard form, okay? But he said it is the ordinary form and how many zeros he has written with it, guys? So 102. So write down the number of zeros that follows the digit 7. Supposedly, guys, if Mr. Omar writes 1.67, sorry, 1.467 into 10 to the power 4. Can you count when, when, when I convert it into the normal form? So my decimal will go to the right. So 4670. So how many digits? Four digits. So how many zeros Mr. Omar has written? Only one zero, only one zero I wrote it. Let me write the question in another sense. 1.467 into 10 raised to the power 9. Got it. So now you need to push the decimal towards right. First, you need to cross the three digits. So nine minus three, so seven zeros I will get. Let me write it. One, four, six, seven. So I need to move to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So can you check that? How many zeros I have moved after zero, after seven, sorry. So these are the six zeros. Let me count it again. Did I do any mistake? Four, six, seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So Mr. Rumor has moved six. Yani there are six zeros. I need to add it over here. And the same way you have to check it out. If uh, after seven, you want to write the zeros, guys. How many zeros you should write? You need to subtract three. So one, zero, two, Minus three will give you guys what it will give you 99 zeros. Mm. These are 99 zeros I have to write after seven because three zero, uh, any three uh, um, uh, zeros will be covered here in, co in moving the decimal from four till seven. Then after seven, I have to write zeros and these zeros are uh, 102 number of zeros are 102 minus 3, which is 99 zeros. Let's go to the next question. Now, question number 11, I think Mr. Abdul Salam has already explained it to you. It is a recurring decimal. Again, this concept came from numbers. Now, I will call x is equal to 0 0.04 dot. If I want to write this number, this recurring decimal, it, it is a rational number, guys. It is a the, the Rida asked me this question, any recurring fraction, it is a rational or irrational? It is a rational number. And if you want to write it in, ex, in extended form, it is 0 0.04040404040404. It moves on forever. If you want to write it in the calculator, uh, 0 0.04040404040404040404, more than 10 times, 0. 4040404404 and then you give the command to the calculator equal sign so calculator give you the answer 4 over 99 but if you write this answer directly examiner will give you zero marks because oh not zero marks because the examiner has put only one mark so here our trick will work that the answer is 4 over 99 no working is required since he has given only one mark. So there is only one accuracy marks. But if the examiner has put two marks or three marks, you have to show your working. So I, as, as your teacher, I need to teach you the technique, how to convert any recurring decimal into the, uh, into the fraction. So let me start X is equal to 0, 0.0 dot 4 dot. Okay, so how uh, is my, is my decimal mojood in front of the recurring decimals? Yes, Mr. Omar, it is mojood. So the, the situation is ready. Now count how many digits are repeating. Mr. Omar, two digits are repeating. Can you multiply the entire equation with 100? Because there are two decimal, two, uh, two repeated digits. So multiply with 100. So x becomes 100x. And here the decimal will be pushed to the right. So if you see, guys, if Mr. Omar write in extended form 0 0.04040404, and now Mr. Omar is multiplying it with 100, so what happens? The decimal will move here. So now my new number will be 
point zero four point zero four zero four zero four zero four like that. And can I write them in simplest form? So, Mr. Omar, the answer is zero dot four dot. So I hope it is clear to everyone when I multiply, um, you know, this uh, uh, recurring decimal with the uh, hundred. Yani everything with hundred. Hold on. So zero point zero dot four dot when I multiply it with hundred X becomes hundred X and here the decimal will push to the right, leaving behind zero four. I don't write zero zero four zero four then dot zero four zero four zero four zero four zero four. No, I don't want to write zero four zero four. I just want to write zero dot four dot. Then after that, I remember Mr. Abdul Salam has taught you you have to write uh, this expression again down. So and subtract X is equals to copy it uh, decimal under decimal decimal under decimal. So zero dot four dot and here is zero. So I just copied this thing down. Now I'm ready to subtract 100 minus X is what 99 X and 0404 will be subtracted. What is that guy? This is four. So my answer is X is equal to four over 99. I hope it is clear to everyone. But again, I will say working is not required. You can get one mark from the calculator directly by writing 0 0.04040404 more than 10 times in the calculator screen, then press the equal sign. It turns the recurring decimal to the um, uh, to the fraction. However, method is already shown to you. The next question number 12 is also on numbers, guys, because numbers are including sets. So sets we have taught you in grade 10, but it is the topic of numbers. Now in sets, you remember that there is a father set which is called a universal set. So the universal set guy, uh, the, the guys, the, the thing it he said integers. I told you integers are whole numbers with plus minus sign, but he said he's taking all the integers which are greater than two. So greater than two is three, four, five, six, seven, never ending. It keeps on moving forever. So integers greater than four. Now uh, set A, so this is infinite set. This is not a finite set because you cannot count how many elements you have in your universal set. Anyways, uh, but then set A is what? Set A is prime number. So the don't say two is included here because he did not include a prime number two. Two is even prime, but his universal set of is starting from three. Your first prime number is three. Then you have five. Then you have seven, no, not nine, 11. You keep on moving forever. Then he said odd numbers, guys. So odd numbers are, don't say one is, I know one is the odd number, but in the universal set, one is not included in the father set. And all of ABCs are the subsets of the universal set. So I need to copy only those elements which are in the universal set. So Mr. Omar, uh, you are writing the odd numbers to start from three, not from one. So three, Five, seven. Did you see? Now I'm gonna write nine. Nine is not a nine is not a prime number, but nine is an odd number. Then eleven, then thirteen, then fifteen. Fifteen is also not a prime number, but it is an odd number. And then you keep on moving forever. Then the guy is saying square numbers, guys. A square number is basically uh, one. Is let me write some square numbers for you. It's very important. Square numbers famous square numbers are one because one square is equal to one two square is four so four is a square number three square is nine nine is a square number 16 is a square number 25 is a square number 36 because it is equal to six square 36 is a square number 49 is a square number then after that uh, we have uh, uh, 64 is a square number then 81 is a square number uh, 100 then 121 because 121 can be written as 11 square then um, guys uh, 144 which is 12 squared so 144 is a square number 121 is a square number 13 square is equal to 169 so you must know that in igcse 169 is a square number then after that 196 which is 14 square it is also a square number um, then after that uh, 
225, which is 15 squared, is also a square number. So I think more than enough that you need to know the square number still 225. So uh, if you see the question, he said, we have some square numbers. Don't say one is included here. One is not in the universal set. So your first square number is four. Then your next square number is nine, then 16, then 25, and then you move on forever. The first question which is asked by him, describe, describe mean you need to express in words, describe the type of numbers which are outside of B, outside of B, yani if the number, guys, if B is odd numbers, what is the opposite of odd numbers? The complement of odd numbers is even numbers. Yani those numbers which can be divided by two. Odd numbers are what? They cannot be divided by two. So as Guy said, B is a set of odd numbers. So what would be the set uh, which is called complement of B? Mr. Omar, the complement of B is set of even numbers. Got it? Now what is he doing? He is saying that, he is saying that your, um, uh, a B complement intersection C. So C is a square number, boys. So you need to get a square number. Can I include, uh, because I need to, in B, B complement is again, 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 again. B complement, Mr. Omar, even numbers. Okay, even numbers. So all even numbers, which are square numbers. So I need to describe it. Maybe, maybe in the exam, Rida, you write it. Uh, four, you write 16, you got it. You write 36. No, this will not give you full marks in the exam because the examiner has used a command word describe. So when he uses a word describe, so you need to write a word, yani a statement. What is the statement? You should write it, but you can check in the marking scheme. Did he accept uh, the answer if the student has written four uh, 16, 36. So you need to mention that all even, all even square numbers, all even square numbers will be your answer. Then after that, guys, we need to label. Universal set is already labeled. Uh, you, you guys know that uh, we have odd numbers are always big. So this is your odd number. Prime numbers are always inside, except two, except Two, you got it. So uh, B is the set of odd numbers. A is the set of prime numbers. There is nothing common with your uh, uh, Yanni. And where is the C, guys? The C is the set here. And uh, did he set? You just leave spaces here. B, A, C. No need to write in the um, in the Venn diagram circles, you, he just left spaces. Whenever examiner left spaces, you need to fill up the spaces. Don't try to write anything here. Don't, no need to write or no need to shade. He didn't say, please be careful and look at the statement. Did he mention to shade something? No, he said, just complete the sets labels. So the labels are here, B, A, C, and that's all. Your job is over. Next is the B part, guys. Very interesting. And I use Mr. Abdul Salam's technique. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is a three sets category. And the three sets category is always divided into eight regions. So I want to check that which portion is coming outside of D. Outside of D is one, eight, seven, and four. One, eight, seven and four. Then after that, E intersection F outside. E intersection F is, let me show you guys. E intersection F outside. E intersection F is this. I need to take outside. So outside portion is, come on, let me write it. One, two, five, eight, three, and four. Now what is the letter written in between? Union. So union means I need to take everything. I need to take, sorry, I need to take everything. Let me erase that. Mr. Omar, you need to shade your, you need to shade your 1874. One, I need to shade first of all one. So one is shaded. 
After that, Mr. Omar shared eight. I shared eight. Then I shared seven. Then I shared four. Then I one is done. Two, two I need to shade. Uh, five I need to shade. Eight I shaded. Three I need to shade. Four is already shaded. So guys, can you imagine Mr. Omar has done his shaded everyone, uh, everything. But if you want to solve it in a different way, uh, your set was D. Mm, was it D complement, guys? Let me check that. Yeah, D complement. So D complement union E intersection F complement. So I apply the rule of complements. And what is the rule of the complements? The complement will be applied on E on intersection and on F. So Rida, I'm going to write E complement. The complement of intersection is union and this is F complement. Then you can also do the question with this technique. It, it's it's all up to you which uh, thing is um, possible for you to solve these type of questions. Now I go to the question number 13. So qu question number 13 is on geometry, guys. It is uh, the subtopic is circle properties. Uh, you took it with Mr. Ahmed in grade nine circle properties. I can go in details, but uh, right now mm, I just need to focus on the things which are required over here. Uh, you remember, guys, a circle has a center. So center is given to you. Circle has a radius. So this is radius, guys. O A and O C R radius. Uh, now I'm going to tell you a very, very important property. What is the property you have learned? Number one, this is the circle. And if Mr. Umar draws a line and that touches the circle at only one point, I know you will say, Mr. Umar, you have drawn a tangent line because tangent is a line which touches the curve or a circle at one point. So this is the radius, guys. So obviously the property comes to your mind. Radius is always perpendicular to the tangent. So this is number one property. So can I just label it? This is Mr. Omar, 90 degrees, and this is also 90 degrees. I don't know this angle. I wanna tell you what is this angle, but for this, you need to know the property guys. So what is the property? I have it in my mind. Oh man. Oh, this is glitchy. Let me try to close it and try to open it again. Come on, come on, come on. So uh, I was solving guys with you. IG1, I'm here, yes. Yes, thank you. Now, I was trying to explain you the second property of circles. That is what? If you have a circle and you have a center, okay? Now, I pick two points on the circumference, any point A and B, and I join them with the center. Lovely. Now, this is called arc AB, smaller arc. Any, this is the smaller length of the circumference. Some people call it as minor arc minor arc and the bigger one is called major arc i'm not talking about a major arc just minor arc okay so the minor arc has made an angle at the center now i pick one point any point i picked here and i join these points on the circumference and you can pick this point Maybe some other students can pick this point. So I'm going to just to join the endpoints ABR with, with this arc. What these angles are, is there any connection of these angles with the central angle? The answer is yes. Central angle is always double. Central angle and these angles are always half. Let me draw the diagram again so that you can understand. So for example, I have a circle and I am choosing a minor arc. I'm using this minor arc. This is point A and this is point B. Mr. Rumor knows this is the center, so I'm just joining this arc at the center. So this angle is always double, as I said. Now I need to pick any point 
on the circumference, on the major arc, not on the minor arc. This is your minor arc and this is your major arc. Pick any point. So maybe Dreyan picked this point. So I'm going to join A with this and also B with this one. So is there any connection? The answer is yes, Mr. Omar. This is double and this is also always half. Let me apply this property here. Oh, wow, Mr. Omar, can you check that? This is the minor arc and it is joined at the center. And also in the major arc, this is the major arc. He picks this point and he joined A with B and C with B. Is there any connection? Yes, Mr. Omar, this is always half and this is always double. So can I say by using this property that Mr. Omar, if this is X, this should be 2X because this is always double and this is 90 and this is 90. Wow. So is it a quadrilateral, my friends? It is a quadrilateral. It is, or I can say this is a kite as well. Why kite? Because these two sides are equal, adjacent sides are equal, and these two adjacent sides are equal. So this is a kite. So if I want to find this 2x, you remember that the sum of all the angles in a quadrilateral is equal to 360. So what I'm going to do, guys, I will write here 2x plus 90 plus 90 plus 44 is equals to 360. Now I need to send all these angles to the right and I write here 2x is equals to 360 minus 90 plus 90 plus 44. You can write here minus 90 minus 90 minus, but please if you want to write the plus sign here, you have to use the brackets. Otherwise, if a student doesn't want to use brackets, he will write 360 minus 90 minus 90 minus 44. Depends upon you how you know, uh, you know, to simplify this expression or equation. So 360 minus, I put the brackets on 90 plus 90 plus 44. Okay, guys. So close the bracket. I divided by two. So 136. So 2x is equals to uh, 136. And then I divide. So x is equals to 136 divided by 2. 136 divided by 2 gives me uh, answer 68. So x is equals to 68 degrees. Mr. How should much you do 360 minus 136 first before dividing? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's, that's fine. This is up to you. And also you can use equation solver, guys. You guys can write 2x. Look at that. Look at Mr. Omar. You can use the equation solver 2x plus 90 but show some working to the examiner because he has put three marks, 90 plus 44, then write the equal sign, then write 360. So look, I have written the equation directly into the calculator. I use the shift solve, and then the calculator will get, get an initial guess, ignore it, and press the equal sign. Look, I got the answer, 68. Left minus right is zero, so 68. This is helpful for you that you can verify your answer directly in the final exam. Now the next question, guys, uh, 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 I can see a trapezium in front of me. So it looks like a question is related to geometry and mensuration. So first time the question on mensuration came. Mensuration means when you want to find area, volume, perimeter, surface area, the question is related to mensuration, but somehow it is also related to geometry. Because if a examiner asks about lines of symmetries or something like that. This is geometry. So this question is a mixture of mensuration or geometry. I wish the examiner could have given this concept in paper four because more than two concepts, a blended concepts must be given in paper four. Maybe it has like not so many marks. That's why he has put it in paper two. So a trapezium is given to you and a trapezium has a one line of symmetry. Oh, one line of symmetry. It means that this is the line of symmetry. So this type of uh, uh, trapezium is called because this side is equal to this side and uh, this is actually bisecting them into two equal halves. Uh, such type of trapezium is also called isosceles trapezium. Just for your for your knowledge, guys, when the uh, when the non-parallel sides are equal, guys, such type of a trapezium is called isosceles trapezium. Ha! Huh. Uh, am I going to use any specific property of isosceles trapezium? No, 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 no. You are not going to use that. You are going to use just uh, the 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 prop. Uh, any uh, see that 
how one line of symmetry because whatever is happening over here whatever the area this has the same area this has okay so how i'm gonna solve this question i will use trigonometry so can you imagine this question is also related to trigonometry why because mr omar will try to find uh, you know the sok using sok katwa uh, this side is needed to me this side uh, which is already given by him 18.2 i need this side guys so uh, in front of the angle this is opposite given to me in front of the 90 this is hypotenuse and this is adjacent so as per sok katwa concept so to a concept, Mr. Umar needs um, um, uh, Toa. Yani I need to use opposite and adjacent. So Toa should be used. I'm going to write here tan of 62 is equals to opposite, which is 18.2 over uh, adjacent. Uh, I need to find the adjacent. So how can I do this, guys? I multiply adjacent here. So adjacent times tan of 62 is equals to 18.2. So don't take the shift tan, I need to send this tan 62 down. So adjacent is equals to 18.2 divided by tan of 62. If a student doesn't know how to solve it, he may use equation solver and write the equation directly into the calculator. He writes tan 62 bracket close and write the equal sign in the calculator then fraction 18.2 yarida and adjacent is X for me because I want to find adjacent. So put a X here press shift solve and then get the answer. The calculator will give you 9.677. Now, since I found this measurement uh, within calculation, so it has to not to be three significant figure. I have to copy it to the four significant figure. So I should write 9.677. So Mr. Umar, I found it this adjacent 9.677. So Mr. Umar, can I draw this one also? This is 9.677 and Mr. Omar, this is 15.4. Now I want to find the area. So area is equal to what of a trapezium? Uh, you need to know the two parallel sides. OK, you have to add them and you have to multiply with the height. So opposite is serving here as a height of the parallel uh, trapezium. So let me write the formula for a trapezium half times sum of the parallel sides. So what are so I'm going to write the sum. So this is 15.4. But then Mr. Omar will write um, 9.677 plus 15.4 plus 9.677. So did you see I count? I added all the uh, the parallel sides, you know, the both parallel sides times the height. The height is 18.2. So I need to copy it into the uh, calculator. And then I will teach you the, other, what's the formula. Uh, the formula is the trapezium is half times A plus B times height. So I'm going to show you this is A and this is B and this is height. OK, so the uh, area of a trapezium is half times the sum of the two parallel sides, sum of the two parallel sides and times with the height. But if a student says, no, Mr. Omar, I, I, I forget the trapezium formula, uh, then they can find the area of a triangle, which is half times base times height. The base is 9.677 and the height is 18.2. And then Rida, you can multiply with two. Why? Because this area is same because both triangles are congruent. So this triangle and this triangle, and then you find the area of a rectangle. Uh, so 15.4, times 18.2. So this area plus this one will also give you the same answer, which I can get it by using uh, the area of a trapezium first. So what did I do? 15.4 is one of the sides and 9.677 plus 15.4 plus 9.677 is the sum of any is the is the is, is the uh, sum of the lengths of the other side. Now I added them up. I added them up and I multiplied this with the height, which is 18.2. So when I copy it in my calculator, half, half times uh, the first side, the top side is 15.4 given by the examiner plus. Now the, the side which I have found it by myself, it is split into three measurements, 9.677. Uh, 
uh, I can times with two or I can again write 9.677 plus 15.4. This is the sum of the other side, uh, which is split into three parts. Now times with the height, which is 18.2, and then I get my answer 456.4. Now, Rida, I have to give my answer to the three significant figures at the final stage, so I should copy only 456 here. Yes, so sir. 456, yes. So after I find all sides, I have to um, multiply it by half, multiply the uh, base by half and the height? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. OK, oh, yeah, that's it. Or what we can do now, I can find the area of one triangle. Supposedly uh, you find the area of uh, this triangle. OK, so area of this triangle. I'm just going to do it in front of you guys. Half. You find the area of this half time base. Base is 9.677 and you multiply with the height 18.2. So this is done uh, since this area is the same area as uh, this because he said it's a line of symmetry. So it's an isosceles trapezium. So this is same area. So can I multiply this area with two guys? OK, done. Plus the area of a rectangle, which is in between. So I'm going to just uh, going to share it. This is the rectangle. So rectangle, you already know it's the uh, its length is 5.15.4 times the height, which is 18.2. Wallahi, I will get the same answer, 456.4. So any technique, yeah, guys, you can use. You can use either area of a trapezium if you are very good at that. So the area of a trapezium is half times A plus B times height. So either you use this area of a trapezium or you can use half times base times height times with two with the area of two triangles plus the area of a rectangle, which is a length times width. OK, and then you guys can find the answer for this trapezium. So this question, I'm surprised why examiner has uh, given a blended concept question in paper two. This question was an ideal question for paper four where blended concepts were given by the examiner. So this question checks on your geometry skills, your trigonometry skills and your mensuration skills. Uh, maybe uh, one reason is because the first time the examiner has given in paper two a four marks question, so maybe he couldn't find um, a single concept question where he can test on you. So question number we got to go now to the uh, next question. So the next question, guys, is again on geometry. Uh, it's congruent triangles. So I'm going to talk about what is a congruent triangle. Uh, the terminology for congruent and similar triangles. So don't get confused between these two terminologies. Congruent means Ditto same copy. If you if you put this figure into this figure, exactly they will match on each other. So when you take the photocopy of something, that you are going to get a congruent shape. But if you enlarge your figure, and you get a bigger figure or you get a smaller figure. So these are similar figures. So I use this notation for the similarity. But for congruency, you will find inshallah in ad advanced geometry books they use like this so this symbol is used for congruent shapes when the two triangles are congruent this is the thing which you need to learn for your exam congruent shapes when one triangle the other triangle if this side is same as this this side is same as this and this side is same as this so i say triple S property, side, side, side. So the three sides of one triangle are congruent to the other three sides. So Mr. Umar, because of because of the triple S property, the triangle A, the triangle A is congruent to triangle B. So this is triple S property. This is property number one. There is a second property which you will take in your um, any, uh, which 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 you take in congruency that is called when I have two sides and this side is congruent to this side. This side is congruent to this side and this angle is included angle is congruent to the other angle. So how do you write it side angle side? 
So side angle side. So angle is in between because it is the included angle. So the two triangles are congruent. Why, Mr. Umar? They are congruent because the side side angle side side any side angle side property. Third property, guys, which is very important for you to know that when you know the um, uh, when you know the two two angles and one sides, guys, uh, and when you know that three uh, when you know uh, side side and angle suppose now the 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 um, the, the sides are any you know, the angle is not included angle you don't have the included angle in this case so uh, do we have the congruency uh, there is a question mark on the congruency but there is a third property any you know, this is s s a Mr. Romer, is it congruent? So there is a question mark on this one uh, because of the sign rule. Maybe later at later stage I will talk about it, but you need to know the third one, which is RHS property. The RHS property is if a triangle is a right angle triangle, hypotenuse is the same as the hypotenuse of this one, and one of the side is same as with this side. Then with the RHS property, you say that the two triangles are congruent. So Let me read the called, um, HL property, hypotenuse. Uh, HL property. I think maybe Mr. Ahmed has taught you the HL property. Yes, you can call it as. We learned but standard, as HL, I think. It is called R. Uh, yani normally, I call it as a RHS property. You got my point. So guys, let's check that how the examiner has given you. Yes, this is another important uh, you know, uh, property, which is the fourth property that sometimes the side is in between. Yani you have an angle here. You have an angle here and you have the included side. So angle side angle. This is the fourth property, which is uh, also congruency. So angle 25. Let me let me share it for you guys. This is uh, come on. 25 is congruent with 25. Yes, Mr. Omar angle is included. Any yani angle is congruent by then side side. So this is the in side in between did you see that and then after that we have here 60 degrees 60 degree so angle side angle this property they are congruent why the two sides are not congruent because their sides are not same not this triple s property can be applied on it because if this is 4 3 3.4 the other side should also have 4 3 3.4 then i can say they are congruent don't say similar triangles he's not asking about the similar triangles whether it is a congruent or not congruent or if it is not congruent you should write none over there so examiner gave you uh, two examples you need to follow those examples and fill the spaces so let's check guys 6.5 6.5, 7, 7, and an included angle. Mr. Omar, side, angle, side. So because of the because of the side, angle, side property, side, angle, side property, uh, I write it here, side, angle, side, and this is congruent. This is congruent. Okay, now next is, guys, it looks like a triple S property is going to be used by the examiner, 5, 5. Then uh, 4.4, 4.5, 4, 4 and then we have 4 and 4. So triple S property, yes, they are congruent with triple S property. Now the next is, let's look at that RHS property. Uh, guys, uh, check it out. Do we have RHS property possible? Maybe you will say, Mr. Omar, yes. No, hypotenuse is the same, but he didn't say that one of the shortest side is equal. Did you see that? This is 35. I know this is 65, but he should have told us one of the side is equal. So they are not congruent. Do you understand my prop? Uh, my, the rule which I have told you. He must have told us. He must have told us the one of the shortest side will be equal. Yani he should say that this side is equal to this side. He should have said that, but he did not say. I know this is 35. This is also 35 guys. But my question is. Is it enough that hypotenuse are equal? No, one hypotenuse and one side has to be a HL property. The side has to be equal. He didn't say, he put the angles equal. So they are not congruent. Don't try to say that this is congruent. No, this is non-congruent. Any, it's, it's, it's not congruent. 
none. No property. Next question is on coordinate geometry. Alhamdulillah, in grade 10, I have taught you coordinate geometry. Coordinate geometry can be considered in algebra, guys, or can be considered in geometry, but uh, I will write it separately because I have taught you coordinate geometry in grade 10. So you can easily identify this question came from coordinate geometry. In coordinate geometry, he gave you a point five seven. So you know that. Mm, five seven is somewhere here. This is five and this is seven. This point is five seven and he labeled this as A and the second point is B. B is nine minus one. So this is nine guys and this is minus one. So this is B nine minus one. Now examiner is asking you what is the length of AB and he's asking you what is this length? So length is very easy, guys. Um, you can complete a right angle triangle or I have already taught you the formula. The formula is Pythagorean. You need to find the difference of X coordinates and you have to find the difference of Y coordinates. So what is the difference of the X coordinates? Come on quickly. The difference of the X coordinates. You have five and you have nine. So you can write nine minus five or five minus nine. I'm writing here nine minus five. I'm taking the difference of um, the X coordinates. Now I'm gonna take the difference of Y coordinates. What are the Y coordinates? I have seven and minus one. So you can write seven minus minus one or you can write minus one minus seven. This is up to you. Now copy this one into the calculator. Uh, examiner will give you full marks. Uh, if you just copy it in the calculator and write the final answer. So bracket open, close square plus bracket open close square. So this is the way of writing Pythagorean guys. So in the first bracket, Mr. Omar is going to take the difference. So either write Rida 5 minus 9 or 9 minus 5. Both are okay with me. 9 minus 5, I'm writing it here. And in the second bracket, I'm going to write minus 1 minus 7. Okay, now press equal sign. The calculator give you the answer in a third form, 4 square root of 5. Now, if you check the marking scheme, if examiner says, I want the exact answer, okay, copy it like this one. But if you want to give the answer in approximated form, press SD, the calculator convert it into the approximated form. I need to write it three significant figures. So 8.94 is my final answer, three significant figures. So both answers are acceptable by the examiner, either this one or this one, because he did not mention that he needs the answer in three decimal place or in the exact uh, irrational form, any four square root of five. Next question is, I want to find the equation. So equation of a line is y is equals to mx plus c. So the first thing which you need to know the gradient of the line AB. So how can I find the gradient of the line AB? You remember I have to write the difference of y coordinates and the difference of x coordinates up and down respectively. So the difference of the y coordinates y2 minus y1. So I'm going to use minus 1 over any yani minus 1 minus 7. And then I will use the same direction 9 minus 5. I'll write it down. Now copy it in the calculator. I'm going to write here um, a minus 1 minus 7 on the top and 9 minus 5 in the denominator. I write it and my gradient is minus 2. If the examiner asks me a perpendicular uh, line, uh, then my uh, opposite reciprocal of minus 2 is 1 over 2. But he is not talking about perpendicular. I'm not going to go with perpendicular. So just I need to stay with my gradient, which is negative 2. I'm going to plug my minus 2 here. So in the place of the gradient, so y is equals to minus 2x plus c. Now my next job is to find the value of c. For this, I can use any of the points. I can use a point or I can use b point in the place of x and why? So I'm going to use a point, guys. So what is my a point? My a point is uh, 5 and 7. Uh, in the place of uh, x, I'm going to substitute 5. And in the place of y, I'm going to substitute 7. So 7 is equals to minus 2 bracket open. In the place of x, I put 5 plus c. Now, I can use equation solver to solve it for C, but I will do manually also. I'm writing seven equals sign, and then uh, minus two bracket open five and bracket close plus C. C, I cannot write it. I need to write X and shift solve, and the calculator give me the answer 17. So when I solve it, 
C will become 17 to me. Manually, I want to show you how I did it. So 7 minus 2 times 5 is minus 10 plus C. Now minus 10 goes to the left. So 7 plus 10, it is equal to C. So 17 is equal to C. So Mr. Omar found C 17 and the gradient is minus 2. I'm ready to write my equation of a line. Y is equals to minus 2X plus 17 is the equation of a line. The next question, which is question number 17, and this is independent question. I think examiner is... Uh, in in this exam is like uh, very unstable. He checks on your skills uh, on coordinate geometry, but he did not stop himself in question number 16. He gave you another question on coordinate geometry, guys. Uh, this time he is entrusted into the gradient of the uh, of the perpendicular line. Wow. So equation of a line is 3y is equals to 4x minus 5. Mr. Omar, this equation has to be written, written in the refined form. What is the refined form? The refined form is y is equals to mx plus c. So Mr. Omar, y has to be alone. So how can I send the 3 to the other side? So the best thing is this 3 should be uh, gone to the other side, I can write divided by three. That's also fine. I cross it out and I divide it by three, but I want to write my three under every term. So basically I will divide it by three here and divide three separately because I want to know what is my gradient and what is my, what is my C? So my C is minus five over three and my gradient is four over three. But this three is gone. And yani when I divide three there, so this is divided by three, which is canceled, and I'm going to get here one. So gradient, I found it. Gradient should be four over three. And the y intercept is minus five over three. Is the examiner interested into um, the gradient of the line? No, Mr. Omar, he's interested into the perpendicular gradient. So perpendicular, you remember, can I take the opposite flip? or the opposite reciprocal, this has a positive sign, I'm gonna write a negative sign. What is the reciprocal of four over three? The reciprocal of four over three is minus three over four. Yani, you have to, whenever you want, you have a line and you want a perpendicular line, you have a gradient four over three, you want to get the gradient of a perpendicular line, you need to do two jobs. You have to change the sign, it has a positive sign. You need to write a negative sign. Then you take the reciprocal of 4 over 3, which is 3 over 4. So minus 3 over 4 will be the gradient of a perpendicular line. So question number 17 is done. Now I'm going to go to the question number 18. I'm so happy now. Alhamdulillah, uh, now grade 10 concepts, which Mr. Omar has taught you in grade 10, uh, they started coming. So question number 18 is uh, on functions. Everyone knows. And functions comes under the umbrella of algebra algebra and graphs. OK, so function F is given by the examiner and also he has given you uh, the GX function. Now examiner is asking you solve. So when examiner use a command function solve, it means I need to get the value of X. So I need to establish the equation. So first job is to establish the equation. How to establish the equation? He wrote here F of G of X plus one is equal to g of f of x. So be careful, guys. What is your g x plus one? Mr. Omar, g x plus one is in the place of x, I need to plug x plus one. So if g of x is, if g of x is x plus four, so if in the place of x, I write x plus one, then I have to replace this x with x plus one. Plus four. So what is the answer I'm getting, guys? X plus one plus four is basically X plus five. So can I can I erase G of X plus one? So G of X plus one will come to you just X plus five. Got it. Now, what is F of X you have? F of X is given by the examiner as X squared plus, minus 25. So can I erase F of X? And in the place of F of X, I'm going to copy X squared minus 25. Wow. Now everything is super easy. Now I have f of x plus five. So if a function is, if a function is x squared minus 25. So rather than using x, if the examiner is using x plus five, so I need to write here x plus five 
square will stay as it is and minus 25 will stay as it is. So I'm just going to copy now f of x plus 5, Mr. Umar. You should write it as um, x plus 5 whole squared minus 25. And can I substitute x squared minus 25 in the place of x? Yes. So I'm going to write x squared minus 25 and with plus 4. Got it. Now, Mr. Omar, is it possible for you to cancel to cancel this minus 25 with, uh, with minus 25 on the other side because both have the same signs? So I can cancel them. Very good. Once you cancel it, guys, so you will be left with x plus 5 whole squared is equals to x squared plus 4. Wow, brilliant. Can I can I open this bracket, guys? You learn from Mr. Omar. We need to open this bracket. So I cannot open this bracket. I should write this bracket, same bracket multiplied twice. So x plus 5 is going to multiply with x plus 5. And I, in the same time, I copied x squared plus 4. Now, x times x gives you x squared. x times 5 gives you 5x. 5 times x gives you 5x and 5 times 5 gives you 25 is equals to x squared plus 4. Brilliant. Can you check that x squared majood on the left and x squared on the right hand side? Mr. Omar, cancel it and convert this equation into a linear equation because 5x plus 5x gives you 10x plus 25 is equals to 4. Mr. Omar, send the 525 to the right. So 10x is equals to 4 minus 25, and then 10x is equals to 4 minus 25 will be minus 21. So minus 21, I'm going to write minus 21 divided by 10. So in decimals, in, in terminating decimal, it is minus 2.1. So either write minus 21 over 10 or minus 2.1. So I'm going to copy here minus 2.1. Now, Rida, if you want to check your uh, question, answer in the exam, go to the equation solver and try to copy this equation in, in, into, the, uh, into the calculator. So once you write it in the calculator and Check that. Are you getting minus 2.1? Is your answer right or wrong? So Mr. Umar is going to write here bracket open x plus 5 bracket close squared equal sign x squared x squared plus 4. I want to check that. Is my answer correct or wrong? So shift solve. Now I press the equal sign. Can you check my answer is minus 2.1? Alhamdulillah, my answer is 110% correct, and it is verified through the calculator. So what Mr. Umar is doing, I'm not telling you straight away start using the calculator. Calculator is your friend. Help you, give you confidence in the final exam that your answer is right or wrong. Next year, this facility will be taken away from the student's hands because in paper two, the calculator will not be allowed. So please try to uh, finish your IGCSE this year. Next year, the calculator will not be allowed. Now, the question number 19, guys, it is again on mensuration because the guy is talking about perimeter of a shape. So this is clearly mensuration question. So in mensuration question, uh, this question is related to circles. And in circles, he's talking about sectors or arc lengths. So I want to give you a brush up on sector and sector angle, arc and arc length. So guys, this is a circle. And if this is the center, this is radius, radius. So this is called minor sector. And this is called major sector. Minor sector, minor area of the minor sector, area of the minor sector plus area of the major sector, it is always equals to the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. Now, Mr. Omar, how can I write the minor arc formula, minor sector formula, or major sector, no, no worries. You just need to know your central angle, this angle. This is x and this is 360 degrees minus x. How can I find the area of a minor sector? So area of a minor sector, you just need to know the radius. So how can I do that? I will write my angle, which is x degrees. I'm going to, I'm going to compare it with the total angle, which is 360, because 360 degree is representing area of a circle, which is pi r squared. So guys, this is the formula for the 
area of a minor sector. But if you want to find the area of a major sector, so what is the angle major sector is making? 360 minus x over 360 times pi r squared. Can you check that? This is the area of a major sector. Now, if in the exam, examiner is not interested into the sector, he is interested into the arcs. So I just want to tell you guys, this is the this is the minor arc. This is the minor arc and this is the major arc. This is the major arc. So can I say minor arc length plus major arc length? Both of them, when we add them together, we get the circumference or perimeter of a circle. OK, so circle circumference is made up of minor arc and major arc. Mr. Omar, circumference formula is 2 pi r if the radius is r. But what is the formula for the minor arc and a major arc? Again, both formulas are depending upon the central angle x and 360 minus x. How can I get that? Easy peasy. So minor arc is equals to x over 360. Now 360 is representing not area. It is representing circumference. And the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. And this formula is the formula for the minor arc. If I want to find the major arc, guys, so now the top will angle will be 360 minus x over 360. 360 is representing circumference, so 2 pi r. I will write it here together, and this thing will be representing my major arc. Now, I want to go to the question which he is actually talking about. He said that, can you find the perimeter of a shape uh, one thing you need to understand, examiner has mentioned here not to scale. So please don't try to use any geometrical tool, ruler, uh, compass, anything to, 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 to find your answers. So not to scale, no tools. Now, another important thing for IGCSC, I want to explain it to you. When examiner use dotted lines, so it means they are not included in the perimeter. So perimeter if any, anyone asks you what is the perimeter perimeter is uh, that length which is covering the uh, the 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 region the covering the region yani here bc major arc and the chord bc not the arc he is not considering bc arc no he is considering uh, the bc line which is a chord which is a chord so i need to know the bc line and I need to know the BC arc, OK? Uh, is there anything special with this triangle? Why he has drawn this triangle? It looks like an equilateral triangle. I wish it is equilateral triangle. Did he mention what type of this triangle is? Yes, Mr. Omar, he said that this is equilateral triangle. Wow, equilateral triangles, my friend, is a special triangle in the family of triangles that all sides are equal. This is. Uh, a regular polygon of three sides and every interior angle is 60 degrees. Every interior angle is 60 degrees. So this is a, a, an equilateral triangle. All the sides are equal. So if examiner mentions that this is equilateral triangle, every side is 12.4. Mr. Umar, this is 12.4, this is 12.4, and this is also 12.4. Bravo. This angle is 60. This angle is 60. Mr. Omar, this angle is 60. Bravo. Can you tell me what is this angle? Mr. Omar, 360 minus 60. This is 300 degrees. Bravo. So Alhamdulillah, you know everything now. What are the things needed by you? You just need this side, which is equals to, uh, this is 12.4. Is it 12.4? Yes. And this is 60. At the back, this is 300. So Mr. Umar needs. Mr. Umar needs the length of the major arc. Can I find it, guys? You all know what is this length? I want to find it, guys. This angle is 300. So 300 on the top 
divided by I'm going to compare it with the circumference. So circumference is represented by 360 degrees times 2 times pi. And what is the radius, boys? The radius is 12.4. Don't you see this is also radius? So 12.4, 12.4, and side BC is also. So radius is 12.4. So this is the length of the major arc. So length of major arc plus, plus this is already given 12.4. Plus 12.4. Can I copy them in my calculator, guys? So open the calculator and write here 300 over 360 times 2 times pi times 12.4. And this gives you, oh, let me, let me copy everything. 300 over 360 times 2. 2 times pi. Guys, pi, always try to write exact form. Otherwise, if, in IGCSE, if you don't want to write pi, then copy as 3.142, yani four significant figure, so that your final accuracy won't be changed. But I'm going to copy here just pi. That's better. Pi, radius is 12.4, plus the side BC, which is also 12.4. So I got my answer 77.3. Final answer has to be three significant figure. So 77.3 is my final answer. So 77.3, I got it. Now the next question is interesting. Uh, this is minor uh, segment, and this is major segment. In examiner is interested in what? In examiner gives the area of a major sector. So examiner gives you area of a major sector is 74.5. He did not give you the radius. So if this angle is 41, can I find this angle 360 minus 360 minus 41? Let me get it. The reflex angle of this acute angle, 360 minus 41. 319. So, Mr. Omar, this angle is 319, which is for the major sector. 319. Am I ready? Yes, Mr. Omar, the area is already given 74.5. Okay, come on. What is this uh, uh, representing? 319. I, am I going to compare it with the with the area of a circle? Yes. So, what? Which angle you will write it here? 360 degrees for the for the area of a circle times pi time radius square because Mr. Omar, I don't know the radius. Okay, now Reda, the best thing is that in the exam, you can use equation solver if your algebra is very bad and you want to verify your answer. So first I'm gonna copy here 74.5, then I write the equal sign, then I write a fraction 319 over 360 and uh, then times, then pi, and then I'm going to write a radius square. So radius, I cannot write it. I need to write x, x square. Now I give the, this command to the calculator. Please give me the radius quickly. So shift solve. And then I got my answer minus five points. So there is something wrong, guys. My radius is becoming negative. So why my answer is becoming negative? I need to change my, my guess closer. And you just write here 10. Because my answer should be positive. So my answer is five point. One seven. You just change your guess. The radius cannot be negative. So 5.17, my calculator gave me the answer. Uh, but uh, examiner will give you, uh, will, will not give you the marks. Maybe he will deduct one mark if you don't show your steps. It's easy. 360 is divided here. When it goes on the other side, it will be multiplied. So 74.5 times 360. Lovely. Now, 319 and pi's are multiplying, so they will go down. So 319 times pi, they will go down, and there is radius square. Now, Mr. Romer sends the radius square to the other side. On the other side, it will become square root. So basically, you need to mention this step without the square here. So your radius is basically equals to, if examiner sees this answer, guys, he will give you one mark for that. OK, so I'm going to copy this one and check that. Is my final answer from the calculator correct or wrong? So I'm going to write a fraction 74.5 times 360 divided by 319. Reda, I'm going to write pi uh, exact. Otherwise, you can write also 3.142. So pi 
and it gives me 5 point. Wow, bravo. I got the same answer which I got from the calculator. But please, I want to tell you, you have to make R as a subject to make sure the examiner knows you know the algebraic manipulations. Now, the question number 10 is, is totally algebra question, and three linear factors are multiplying. You cannot do at the same time the multiplication. You have to do the two brackets first multiply. Then once you get your final answer, that should be multiplied. The answer should be multiplied with the third one. So let me do this question. So this is algebra question. And this is related to expansion. I'm going to pick two, uh, two brackets and I'm going to multiply them first. So x minus 2 multiplied with 2x plus y. OK, so do it step by step. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Minus 2 times 2x is not 4x. It's minus 4x. Minus 2 times 5 is minus 10. Now, 5x and minus 4x are like terms. I need to combine them. So 2x squared as it is, plus 5x minus 4x is plus 1x. And minus 10, you need to copy it as it. Mr. Omar, I am done. OK, can you copy it here? 2x squared plus x minus 10. And still, I need to multiply this with x plus 3. Bravo. So what happened, guys? This yellow thingy, the two linear brackets uh, factors are multiplied, and I got a quadratic factor out of this um, with the expansion of brackets. Now, I will repeat the procedure. 2x squared multiplied with x will give you 2x power 3. Now, 2x squared multiplied with 3 will give you 6x squared. Now, x multiplied with x gives you x squared. Now, x multiplied with 3 gives you 3x. Last number, minus 10 multiplied with x gives you minus 10x. And minus 10 multiplied with 3 gives you minus 30. Now, how many? Now, how many? How many like terms I have, guys? So the like term is 2x cubed. So I just copied 2x cubed, guys. And then we have here x squared, x squared. Two terms are containing x squared. So I'm going to copy just 7x squared. And then later on, guys, we have here um, uh, plus 3x and minus 10x. I'm going to copy here minus 7x. And then I just write my answer as minus 30. So this is my final answer, 2x cubed. Uh, through the calculator, I have no way to check my answer because this is uh, uh, you know, containing variables. So this question is totally algebra question uh, based on your um, uh, simplification and expansion skills. Question number 21, guys, it is again algebra. And this one is the first topic when I joined your class in grade 10. It is related in inversely proportion, directly proportion. I call it variation questions. OK, so the name of the topic is called variations. So this is algebra. Subtopic is. Variations. What are the two things related to each other? Functions, uh, sorry, a force in Newton's is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Wow. Force is directly proportional in the class. How did I teach you? This is the sign of proportionality. Force is directly proportional to the square of the distance. So I remove the proportional signs. I want to make an equation. So F is equals to K D square. Like your physics teacher is teaching you Newton's second law. Force is directly proportional to acceleration. And once he removes the sign of proportionality, he writes M A. So M is, uh, is, is a proportionality constant, which is a co universal constant. Whether you are on the surface of moon or you are on Earth or in Mer Mercury, your constant mass will not be changed. Anyways, uh, so he said force is directly proportional to the square of the distance and K is the proportionality constant. So you have to get the value of K first. For this, he will give you a pair. 
What is the F given to you? 48, it is equals to K. And what is D given to you? 1.5 squared. Now, if you want to use equation solver, you can write 48 equals, in the place of K, you write X times uh, bracket open 1.5 bracket close square, and you shift solve, you get your answer 21.333, or if you press the answer here and press equal sign, you get your answer as 64 over three in a, in a, in a fraction form, or you can also write it as a decimal. But I wanna show you manual way, 48 divided by 1.5 square, and that is the value of K. So let me write it guys for you, 48 divided by 1.5 squared, and I got my answer 64 over three. So 64, keep the answer as a fraction because guys, uh, you know, um, this answer will be approximated. So it's better to keep the constant exact. Yani this is exact answer. But if you try to approximate it, uh, maybe examiner will, will, will not feel good about that, okay? So this is the final answer, 64 over three, you write it, 64 over three. So F is equals to 64 over three. Uh, Samu alaikum, so, uh, 64. Yes, uh, I'll finish the session in 15 minutes, inshallah, I'll get back to you. Okay, 64 over three, and what is the D? It is D squared. Did the examiner say, find an expression, write in terms of D. So I have written my F, my F in terms of D as 64 over three, D squared. Next question is very challenging. Uh, it Although it has one mark, it is like 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 a very logical question. What is the logical question behind it? When the distance between the magnet is doubled, how the original force will, will react? The simple way is this one, guys. How force is related with, how force is. Oh, guys, did you see that Mr. Omar did a mistake? What is the mistake I have done in the question? I forgot the examiner has mentioned it is inversely proportional. Wallahi, I solved the whole question as directly proportion inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun i need to just copy thanks god i saw the inversely proportional so i need to just do the question again i wish someone could have stopped me uh, mr omar you are solving the question with directly proportional so force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance maybe this mistake is a blessing from allah uh, maybe you guys will learn more from that f is equals to k over D squared, got it? So I'm gonna substitute F here and D here. So F is 148 and K is equals to 1.5 squared. So do the cross multiplication guys, 48 multiply with 1.5 squared, uh, it gave me 108. I'm happy that K value is coming as a fraction, uh, as a whole number, that's good. So what is my answer, guys? So 108 over D squared. That's my final answer. Thanks, God. We did it. So inversely proportional. So I'm going to write it here. Now the question is, he said that if, if D is doubled, if D is doubled, so D doubles mean, you know, if D is 3, the double of 3 is 6. If D is, uh, if D is 4, the double of 4 is 8. Now the guy says, if one of the variable, which is D, it is going to be doubled. So how can I write it? If it is going to be doubled. So one over rather than one squared. Now Mr. Romer is assuming the original one is one. Now I'm going to double it. So instead of one, I'm gonna write here two. What is the answer? Oh, Mr. Romer. So it means our force will be quarter. You got the point, guys. He said that the distance between the magnet is doubled. The new force is n times the, uh, the original force. So if my, if my distance is doubled, my force will be quarter. That's the point. And F is proportional to the inversely portion to the D squared, if D squared is doubled. So instead of D, I'm gonna write 2D, or if D's original value is one, now it becomes two. How your new forces, Mr. Umar, answer is becoming quarter. So basically 
your n yani it will be um, your value will be quarter of that so it is 1 over 4 the the new force will be reduced four times yani it it will be uh, reduced by by a quarter that's the idea behind the question so i hope it is clear to you guys now next question number 22 it is on algebra guys this is algebra um now i need to simplify uh, this expression so 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 on the top 3x squared minus 12x in the denominator now in the top i have like three terms i need to make use of my calculator uh, i think sale in the class he did mention to me mr umar i want to learn how manually we can convert a trinomial into uh, the two factors uh maybe some other time i will teach you but since the calculator is allowed i will make use of a calculator to teach you how to convert any trinomial any 2x square minus 5x any quadratic expression into the two linear expression so just you need to go to the polynomial function guys go to the equation mark and don't press simultaneous go to the polynomial degree 2 uh, press 2 enter press negative 5 enter press negative 12 enter and press the what is the first answer i got calculator solve it for you any calculator is solving equation for you calculator is solving a quadratic equation so first answer you got x is equal to 4 and the second answer you are getting x is equals to minus 3 over 2 ha huh. how to write my answer how to write my answer in the factor form mr umar can you do that yes this is cheating guys so i am you know teaching you the official cheating yani calculator is allowed you can convert from the answer a factor form so this is plus 4 when it goes to the left it becomes x minus 4 okay because since it is plus 4 it is shifted to the left become minus 4 now can i convert it into the factor form first 2 will be cross multiplied so it becomes 2x is equals to negative 3 and the negative 3 goes to the left it becomes 2x plus 3 is equal to 0 so mr omar the second factor is 2x plus 3 let me teach you quickly if my answer is x is equal to 5 what is the factor form the factor form is x minus 5 if the x is equals to minus 7 what is the factor form x plus 7 is your factor form if your answer is x is equals to 5 over 3 then 3 goes here so 3x is equal to 5 3x minus 5 is a factor form if x is equal to minus 7 over 8 i want to convert it into the factor form 8 multiplies with x it gives you 8x is equal to negative 7 negative 7 comes here 8x plus 7 is equal to 0 mr omar 8x plus 7 is a factor form so how, what i did i solved it with the calculator i got two answers and then i converted my answer smartly into the two factor forms so now i erase everything because i don't want to show to the examiner that i cheated from the calculator however at some other stage you can learn from mr omar how to convert them in manually into uh, the factor form uh, that's very simple maybe uh, any yani, uh, 10 to 15 minutes it will take to explain you the idea uh, but very quickly i will tell you i will multiply 2 with the 12 it becomes minus 24 then i will need to look for two numbers which can be added or subtracted should give you maybe mr ahmed has taught you this concept but we will do it later guys right now i just need to give you four marks how four marks so one mark for this and one mark for this and now i need to factorize what is the common factor from 3 and 12 3 is the common factor and x is the common factor because i always take the highest common factor 3x is the highest common factor of 3x square minus 12 so i'm going to take common so x minus 4 is left uh, so guys this will give you one mark now one mark for cancellation because that's why he used the word simplify because there should be something some factor should be cancelled uh, which is common up and down x minus 4 has to be cancelled and my final answer is 2x plus 3 is left on the top and 3x is left in the denominator that's the final answer you should have written so it means if a student doesn't know manual way of converting a trinomial into two linear factors here examiner is not going to cut your marks you can rely on a calculator and get your answers convert them into the factor form and then you can do the procedure question number 23 is trigonometry guys after a long time i see a trigonometry question came this is question number 23 trigonometry guys i want to solve this equation 
4 sine of x is equal to 3. Ha, if a student wants to get the answer directly, he doesn't know anything, he will write it into the calculator. Go to the equation, uh, computing mod of a calculator. 4 sine of x, bracket close, equals uh, 3. Okay, shift solve. And starting from zero, let's check what is my uh, what is my guess 21. I need to press equal sign. Calculator gave me the answer 48.59. So first answer is 48.59. Uh, but he said solution. So there is one more solution. You remember that if uh, according to ASTC rule, uh, sign is positive in the first and the second quadrant. And Mr. Abdus Salam has taught you, if you have the angle here, if you want to convert it into the second quadrant, it is 180 minus X. If you want to convert it into the third quadrant, that is 180 plus X. If you want to convert it into the fourth quadrant, that is 360 minus X. Now, since my answer is, yani my sine of X, my sine of X is equal to three over four, which is a positive number, and sine is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So first quadrant, I can easily get it manual way is shift sine of three over four. And then I will send my, which is, which will come to me 48.54. And then I do 180 minus 48.54. The calculator will give me the second answer, but I want to rely on a calculator. Change your guess now. Rida, write your guess more than 180 or between yani, uh, between 100 and 180, any answer you can write. I will write 120, press equal sign. Now calculator gave you 131. So the answer, 131 in the second quadrant. So 131.40. You remember guys, I need to give the answer always to one decimal place. So 48.6 degrees is my first answer. And second answer is 131.4. Manual way, I wanna teach you again. Um, uh, this was the calculator version. So cal uh, uh, the manual way is, um, I'll do it again. Uh, suppose a trigonometric equation comes to you in the exam for sine of x. First of all, you have to uh, make sine x or cosine x or tan of x as a subject. So send the four to the other side and check that what is your output? Is your output positive or negative? Mr. Omar, it is positive. Then draw the quadrant diagram and write ASTC. Sine is positive in the first quadrant and it is positive in the second quadrant. This is my first quadrant and this is my second quadrant. OK, uh, I need to get my acute angle first. So acute angle is always shift sign of three over four. So let me write shift sign. Go to the computing mod shift sign of three over four. It gives me the answer 48.56. So sorry, not 48.56. We have 48.56 is my answer. 48.56, this is my answer. And if I want to transfer it into the second quadrant, I do 180 minus 48.56, and the same answers will come to me. So question number 23 on trigonometry, Mr. Omar has discussed with you. Do we have any other question? I think maybe this is the last question. Last question, oh wow. So I will be done because after, after this, I have to go to the hospital because three o'clock, the visiting hours will start, so I will. I need to finish it very quickly. Uh, so I have an equation: one over uh, one over x plus one plus nine over x plus nine is equals to one. So please try to learn from Mr. Omar how to solve these type of equations. Whenever you see uh, fractions, and this is a fraction, and this is also a fraction, so I have to make the same denominator because uh, I have in between plus or minus sign. If there is a multiplication sign, you can multiply one with nine and this one, but there is no multiplication sign in between. I have to make the same denominator or I have a butterfly method. So butterfly method is one multiplied with X plus nine and X plus one multiplied with nine and X plus one multiply with X plus nine in the denominator. So this method is called butterfly method. So X plus one, I think Mr. Ahmed has taught you this technique in grade nine. So X plus one multiplied with X plus nine in the denominator, one multiplied with X plus nine plus 
9 multiplied with x plus 1. So don't forget, guys, we need to keep them within the brackets, and this is equals to 1. Now, after that, in mathematics, we have learned that whenever you have a fraction here and you have a fraction here, single fraction, single fraction, you are allowed to do cross multiplication. So I am allowed now to apply the cross multiplication because I have a single fraction here and a single fraction here, any one over one, I'm allowed to do the cross multiplication. So cross multiplication means this X plus one and X plus nine should multiply with one. And on the left hand side, try to open the bracket. So X plus nine, I wrote it here, nine multiplied inside guys. So it gives you nine X plus nine, is equals to and this x this whole thing has gone here so x plus one and x plus nine now finally guys nine x nine x plus x gives you 10 x and nine plus nine is 18 and now x times x hurry up x squared and x times nine is nine x one times x is x and one times nine is nine it looks like i'm gonna end up with a quadratic equation so 10x plus 18 is equal to x squared and 9x plus x will be 10x guys and then it is plus 9. Now I'm going to send uh, the 10x and 18 to the right hand side. So 0 is equals to x squared plus 10x plus 9 minus 10x because plus 10x goes to the other side minus 10x plus 18 goes to the other side becomes minus 18 now guys what happens so 0 is equals to x squared 10x at minus 10x will be cancelled and you will be left with just minus 9. Uh, now guys you can write it as 0 is equals to um, x squared plus 0x plus uh, sorry minus 9 you can write it because the X is missing. Uh, I'm just doing it for those students who wants to use the calculator. Otherwise, wallahi, I can solve this question directly. How X square minus nine goes to the other side becomes plus nine. And then I'll take the square root with plus minus sign. You remember whenever you take square root, you have to write plus minus sign. So plus minus three. So I got two answers, plus three and minus three. However, if a student says, no, Mr. Omar, I don't know uh, how to do it with this technique. So uh, then you have to write um, the, the the coefficient of x squared is one. OK, and the coefficient of x is uh, zero uh, because x is missing. So I just write zero x and then we have minus nine. So write it in the calculator. Go to the equation mod. Uh, press two uh, coefficient of x squared is one. Enter. Uh, coefficient of x is zero, enter. Uh, constant is minus nine, enter. First answer is three, and the second answer is minus three. So I got my final answer, three and minus three. So maybe in the final exam, you can also write uh, the full equation into the equation solver uh, form. Yani you can write one over. Uh, I wish your calculator can solve it for you. X plus one uh, plus uh, fraction nine over. Um, I, just to verify my answer is correct or wrong. Uh, x plus nine mm, then after that equals one equals one shift solve and i want to check that is my oh yes calculator can solve it for you can i change my guess uh, minus five so that i can get also second answer minus three so my second answer is also correct so i can check my answer from the calculator as well so guys that's all uh with the um, the uh, with the session i hope i want to check that how many students are attending me attending my session, they will really get the benefit of this session. So thank you guys for joining the session and it is recorded. So at later stage, you can watch the recording. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum.